Hi, I'm Mark Upton from TeamSportCoaching.com and in this presentation we want to go through how you can use video to enhance your coaching. Um, and regardless of the level you're at, uh, there's hopefully some stuff in here that you can use. It's really meant to be some simple and basic tips and, and techniques that you can use. Perhaps some might be considered obvious, others you might not have thought of. So hopefully it stimulates some thinking and some ideas and you can put some of these practices in place. Whilst the examples I use through the presentation are related to Australian football, you could really apply it to any team sport. So for most coaches, let's talk about what's realistic. So if you're not at the elite level, which uh, the large percentage of, of uh, coaches won't be, what's realistic in terms of uh, how you gather your video and then how you an analyse it? I think one of the things that always comes up is the time required to do it, Who's going to get the video footage in terms of filming it? How am I going to get the equipment in terms of cameras, tripods, uh, laptops if I want to um, capture the footage and, and make it digital, which I suggest you do. So all these things come up. Now, these days, I don't think any of that should really be an excuse. I think in any club or team that you're at, I'd be highly surprised if you can't find someone who has a digital video camera someone who has some a couple of hours, maybe a week, to film your games. Maybe not every week, maybe uh, once a month. I'd be surprised if someone doesn't have a laptop that you can plug your camera into and record your games or download your game onto. And I'd be surprised if you don't have someone who knows the technical ins and outs of how to perhaps use some uh, video software. It's probably one of your players, one of your younger players these days will do it on his ear, I'm sure. So all those things I don't believe are an excuse. Obviously the days of tape to tape, scrub them out, they're gone. Don't worry about using tape. There's really no excuse for not having um, your video as a di in a digital format, which means you probably need some software once you've recorded, uh, filmed the game, that you need some software then to capture the video and to turn it into a digital source. There's free options available, so on a, if you've got a Windows machine, uh, things like Movie Maker or QuickTime Pro for, for about 35, 40 bucks, um, where we'd let, enable you to capture your video off your camera and then also do some editing. Um, on the Mac, iMovie or QuickTime Pro again, will give you the same options. If you're in a financial position to spend some money, then there are specific sports analysis software packages. These are just some of them. If you do a Google search, you can find them and, and plenty more, I'm sure. Starting off at about $1,000 and working up from there. So the summary of that is regardless of what situation you're in, I think you should be able to find uh, an avenue for filming your games and then being able to get that footage onto a computer in a digital format so that you can analyse it. So now that we've got that out of the way, the real crux of the presentation, I'm going to go through three components of the game, which are, in Australian rules, technical, the tactical and the physical components. Technical being things like kicking, marking, handball, uh, gathering ground ball, those sorts of things. Tactical being decision making, style of play, um, on and off the ball. So the decisions you have to make when you're out there. Physical obviously being things like aerobic, uh, conditioning, strength, those sort of speed, stamina, all those types of things. And in those three components of the game, we're going to apply each one to three areas of coaching. Game analysis, training design, and player feedback. So we'll look at how we can use video for the technical component and across the three areas for that technical component. Game analysis, training design, player feedback. We'll do the same for tactical, the same for physical, so you get a good idea of different ways you can apply video uh, for different components of the game and also areas of coaching. Let's get into it. Technical, things like kicking, handballing, marking. So in terms of game analysis, if you've got your video, you could go through the game and look at what are the different types of kicks that occur in the game and how often. So you go through your video and if your software enables that you could tag um, different types of kicks or just with pen and paper, just start collating uh, a frequency count of 
for the types of kicks that are occurring and how often. You could do this at AFL level, look at AFL games if you can't analyse your own. I'd suggest you try and analyse your own if possible because that then relates to your training design and your kicking drills. So rather than just doing mindless lane work, how often does that type of kick actually occur in a game? I don't think it's actually very often, so we waste a lot of time doing mindless lane, lane work. Um, you can then use the, the numbers that you get from your game analysis to design your kicking drills, uh, full ground drills that might include a variety of kicks. In terms of use for player feedback, you might uh, video a player's kicking technique and then sit down with them and have a look at that technique and see what's going right or wrong. Again. Depending on your resources, you might be able to have two cameras. Depending on your analysis software, you might be able to do split screen where you've got a side on shot and a frontal shot um, combined together so you can look at both aspects. So they're, they're the options in terms of how you could perhaps use video on the technical side of the game. For the tactical side, again, game analysis, I think this is really where. Um, analyzing the game comes into its own. What scenarios occur during the game? So looking at forward entries, quick forward entries, slow forward entries, looking at counter attacks out of defense, looking at stoppages, clearances to forward entries. What type of scenarios occur during the game? How often do they occur? What do the player numbers look like for each situation? So a lot of numbers back in defense, how many? This is important because when it comes to designing game-based drills, you need to know these things. So if we're going to counter-attack out of defence, a typical situation might be the defence outnumbers the forwards by one, they then move the ball out, and the midfield might be covered in a man-on-man -man scenario. So these sorts of things are really important in designing your game-based drills. In terms of the player feedback, video is a really powerful tool. There's many ways you can use video for player feedback. I've just listed a couple here. It's really powerful. They say picture paints a thousand words. Well, video must paint a lot more than that, I think, because it's a great way of showing some examples of the style of play that you're after and either positive or negative reinforcement um, for what you're looking for. So either good examples to say this is what we want, boys, or we need to do this a little bit better. Another way is you can... Uh, use video scenarios to get a feel for what your uh, team's understanding of the game plan is. So you might be a team that wants to switch the ball in defence. So you might show a clip of the ball going into your defence. It's kicked in by the opposition. Your defender takes the mark and pause the video and say, what, what decision should you make now? What would you be looking to do next? And get the players to respond. See how much detail they can give you, the more, the better the better your coaching has obviously been. This type of thing is really uh, best done in small groups, say no more than about eight. That way players will be a lot more willing to contribute and get better uh, interactivity and probably no more than six to eight video clips during that type of session. But that can be a really powerful use of video in terms of teaching players and for player feedback. Finally, looking at using video to look at the physical component of the game. In terms of game analysis, you might just get someone to film or follow just one player and look at the number of times he sprints or walks or jogs or strides, etc., and calculate maybe the work to rest periods in your games. At the highest level, we've, there's obviously GPS devices that now give us, give us all that information. That may not be available to you, it may be. Um, if not, this is just a simple way to perhaps work out what sort of um, conditioning requirements are required so that you can design some conditioning drills around say those work to rest ratios or maybe even look at your game based drills film them and look at them from a conditioning point of view and say are my game based drills giving the same sort of work to rest or intensities that's that's uh, required for a game really important if you're doing a lot of game based training during pre-season and you need to be getting a conditioning element into it and finally for player feedback uh, it's good to film that film a single player, sit down, watch the footage with the player, see what their work rate's like, see what their feel or comments are on it, particularly when you've got players that you think might need a, a lift in work rate. An even better way, again, if you've got um, the resources and the software, 
is to get footage of a player that you consider maybe to be an out, have an outstanding or benchmark work rate and use that as a comparison. You might even be able to split screen um, the two players, say, in a, in a drill um, or even in a game and just get a comparison that's really powerful um, of what their work rates look like. Often the penny will drop for the player you're looking for a bit more out of when he sees a comparison with what the benchmark standard is. So there you go, that's all I've got. Um, some ideas for how to use video in your coaching from basic to more um, advanced techniques. Hopefully you got something out of this. Of course, there's a lot more coaching uh, resources and content at teamsportcoaching.com. We'd always love to hear from you, so email admin at teamsportcoaching.com. Again, I'm Mark Upton. Thanks very much.